Good evening from Agora Studio in European Parliament in Brussels. I am Borja Jovanovski. And I'm Ivana Dragicevic. For 10 years now, Macedonia is stuck in the European integration limbo. Since 2005, it's a candidate country with six consecutive recommendations to start negotiations on membership. EU's encouragement of the reform processes instead of democratization brought the crash of the state of, uh, state of rule of law and democratic institution, which was explicitly illustrated in the publication of thousands of wiretape files. This imposed a special engagement of the EU and US in Macedonia again. Today, the country is in its deepest political crisis since independence also faced with the pressure of the pan-European refugee crisis. So how the EU failed in the case of Macedonia and has the enlargement process lost the momentum to become a transformative power for change in that country? We are talking today with Mr. Ivo Weigl, Rapporteur of European Parliament for Macedonia. Welcome to our programme. Mr. Edward Kukan, uh, Member of Parliament from EPP, part together with Mr. Uh, Weigl of so-called EU Parliament Troika, engaged to solve the political crisis in recent months in Macedonia. Welcome to the programme. And Mr. Nikola Dimitrov, former Macedonian ambassador in the US and now the member of the uh, Global Institute in The Hague. Thank you and welcome to our programme. So you said in, that in 2001 uh, and the civil war in Macedonia, uh, and with the Ohrid agreement, you played a crucial, critical, good role in Macedonia. So what happened today? In the words of uh, Stefan Lena of Carnegie Europe, EU has uh, its worst record in the country where it made its biggest uh, success in terms of conflict management. In 2001, the EU worked very closely with NATO and with the help of our late president, Trajkovski, averted a civil war and created the Ohrid Framework Agreement as a basis for a new kind of uh, inter-ethnic relations. Ten years ago, Macedonia was a front-runner in the reform process, if uh, definitely among the front-runners. Today, it is uh, difficult to stop the country to move backwards on virtually every single political criteria when we talk about the Copenhagen criteria, be it the state of its democracy, independence of its judiciary, the freedom of the media. Uh, it is not fair to blame the context for this only, but I firmly believe that the bloc that Greece has put forward to uh, stop Macedonia in moving towards Europe uh, took out the incentives from the Macedonian political dynamics out and uh, created a sense of disillusionment with the European Union. So in that situation of a limbo, we are now facing the deepest, and I try not to call it a political crisis because I think this is a very deep institutional, it's basically a failure of democracy in Macedonia. The EU uh, stepped in last year with the help of the three MEPs and Commissioner Harmark himself, the EU brokered the so-called Pergino Agreement uh, that in some ways tries to create some nascent mechanisms to provide for accountability, both political and legal, and to level the playing field for elections. The old system, however, and we are seeing that increasingly, fights back. Uh, and uh, to me, the most striking example is the uh, initiative before the Constitutional Court that in the midst of all the negotiations about how to create the preconditions for free and fair elections, uh, three weeks after the special prosecutor started an investigation targeting former ministers in government for electoral fraud, the Constitutional Court is now discussing whether it should enable the president to pardon for crimes against elections. It is shameless. Uh, Mr. Weigel, Mr. Kukan, you were recently in Macedonia as a part of the delegation of the European uh, Parliament to, to help facilitate the, the, the agreement between the, the party. Uh, you failed. Uh, what was the reason? Why you, you were not able to achieve a consensus between the political party for some agreement about the election? Uh, May I start? You... I, yes. will, I will yes, be please. brief. Let me mention one thing concerning your statement, which I fully agree. 
uh, and I uh, share the uh, feelings of Macedonians and Macedonian leaders to be a candidate country for such a long time and mo for mo after more than seven years didn't get the date for starting the negotiations. You are right, it was a big mistake of the European Union. In that connection, I wanted to mention that the European Parliament every year adopted a resolution in which recommended the European Council to start and to give the date. So I would not include the European Parliament into the European institutions which share the responsibility. Uh, we, we share the responsibility for, responsibility for that. Even in the, this year's report, there is the recommendation, but with big conditionality after the fair democratic elections on the 5th of June, we would recommend the Council to start the accession negotiations. So I think it should be mentioned to be, to be fair to all the European institutions. Uh, concerning your question, I, I don't think that we, we, we failed. Uh, the agreement was uh, taken in the Parliament to postpone the elections. Yes, it, it's a pity that it was not the agreement of all parties, because we were very close and it was a missed opportunity. I can confirm that. But the process is going on in a very difficult way, with, with many problems, delays, everything. But until now, both or all four political parties are working in order to prepare the credible elections on the 5th of June. As far as I know, the uh, leader of the opposition, Zayev, still said that they are going to participate in the elections. Let's see what kind of situation is there before the election. But now I think that it's the responsibility, very big responsibility for all the politicians in Macedonia, for the international community, for the European Union, to, wo to work on the situation which would uh, start taking out the country of this crisis which is there for too long time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Weigel, the same question about the success or failure of your uh, mission. Well, I don't think you. that it is uh, relevant to speak about whether or not we failed or we succeeded. So this is I'm not a narcissist in the mm -hmm. politics, so uh, I think we achieved what was achievable. And of course, we, are we were all the time dependent on h how far the readiness of the political parties and their leader leaders is reaching. Do they really want to change the trend in the, in the country? Do they want to have a genuine democracy? based upon the uh, principles uh, which the countries who are candidates have to negotiate and have to agree upon. Uh, uh, negotiations are actually not uh, 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 negotiations in the real sense of the word, but it is, it is more to, to accept, to accommodate yourself with the values of the, of the, of the integration where you want to, to join. Uh, I have the feeling that this consensus in Macedonia has not been achieved. And this is the major problem for the country at this, at this particular moment. Uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the experience of all other countries, new member countries, should teach Macedonian politicians something. In all the countries who were joining European Union in the past decade, it was, there was, uh, as a basis, National there was consensus. a joint committee of all political parties who were working on, on, on uh, enlargement as a joint process. And they got also behind them also the, the public opinion. The, in Macedonia, they did not do so far. But I am not so pessimistic as you are. And I would say uh, Macedonia still I have all chances. I'm pessimistic or optimistic? Well, you, just you made a very uh, pessimistic just statement for the first the, time, uh, and about I, the role I, of I the don't EU. like it uh, that way. You know, the, 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 the situation is. 
complicated. We are speaking about a, a country which is uh, uh, per se a complicated multinational country with difficult neighborhood and open questions with all the neighbors who don't support the, the European path of Macedonia. And we have also be, been not very, very helpful. We, I think, European Union and, and, and NATO as such. So I am not pessimistic. I still think the process is going on. Let's wait for the election. Let's see how these elections will be judged by many observers. There will be a huge presence of international community uh, before and during the election. We have process. started to talk about the credibility of the EU and the credibility of the enlargement process and its uh, transformative power to make changes in some society. We are talking right now in, about Macedonia. Have you, have you, have you read the, the, the Priva report? Sure I did, yes. sure I did. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm saying what Priva was saying. There are, there, are, there are a lot of things which should have been changed in Macedonia so far. But let's see how Europe, uh, we have to see the Macedonia also in the broader con the context of, of what's happening in Europe. And uh, I think uh, there are some countries who are by far uh, 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 a reason for a concern, uh, for a bigger concern than, than Macedonia is. I think Macedonia needs assistance, needs, needs to be assisted, needs, needs to be understood. And our, our criteria should not, we should not give the rabat to the, to, the, to the problems which are so obvious. It is a kind of authoritarian uh, government. It is, it is uh, 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 there are many points where the, the human rights are questioned and, uh, and, uh, and the media uh, situation is, uh, I would say, critical. Uh, media are not in the situation to play their normal role in a democratic uh, process uh, because they are they are under the political pressure. There are many things which should be uh, should be improved, but I would say there is still some time, and we bought some time also with the postponement of the election. Not too much, but still something. Uh, Mr. Kukan, your political option, EPP, uh, supported Prime Minister Gruevski for, for a long time. Do you think that uh, you are, maybe it's too hard to say to blame, but uh, maybe you should do something inside your group before that? What do you think about that kind of responsibility, leaving him uh, uh, to rule in that way, to have the situation as Mr. Weigel just mentioned? Well, I can assure you that EPP is... Uh... Uh, speaking all the time with the Prime Minister and uh, the uh, Wumro Party, our uh, colleagues, to do their responsibi responsibility in order to, to find the democratic solution to get out of this uh, crisis, let's call it crisis. Uh, they are always under pressure to keep the dialogue with the, with the opposition, the, to look for the compromise which will be good for the country. They should rectify many uh, issues which were uh, prevailing in the work of the government so far. And uh, in those discussions, we really use the plain language, and I think they, they, they understand us. It is the same role which we are playing now, that country needs the solution, and for, for the, the solution which would be the compromise of all political players, and which should be uh, shown in the free democratic elections. They know, and I think everybody knows what is expected from them. Uh, the voter register, the reforms in the media, all these, all these issues. 
So far there was no agreement, but I think there is still some time. We cannot expect miracles, but I think that those issues are complicated, but there is possibility to, to achieve progress. Even now, when I understand the working group is no longer holding meetings, I, I heard that there is a possibility, maybe Mr. Zaya mentioned it, that they should discuss it among themselves in the parliament. And uh, that's not uh, that's not a bad solution. Yeah. The, the, yeah. If they can talk to each other directly, I think that should be the basis for finding. Would be nice agreement. if they could talk to each other directly. We, but uh, about the e uh, role of the EU, where is EU now after your 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 mission? Where is Commissioner uh, Han? The, Commissioner yeah. Han mysteriously disappeared, as well as the EU ambassador in Skopje. Wh wh where is EU? Can I is jump there in any here? EU? Yes, please. I, I will answer. Yeah, please, yeah, for the question for um, all of you. We have a very ambiguous situation after the last visits. Commissioner Han, in his farewell statement, when after eight hours of discussions with the leaders, failed to reconcile this urge for uh, early elections, because in the eyes of the governing party, early elections are saving, is saving the day, basically. And it's uh, a line where they will be able to get, re get rid of all the burden that the Persian, all the burdens that the Persian agreement brought in the political landscape, the special prosecutor's office, uh, all these negotiations. So for them, elections are okay. It's done. On the other side, on the other side, for the opposition, they they focus on the quality of the elections and the preconditions. They threaten to boycott. So you have this tension between the two. And, and Han, when he left, he said, well, it's not only the elections. Refugee crisis is here. Macedonia is on the front line. European perspective is there. It's now up to the political parties. So he left, he left it very, unambigu very ambiguous. The assessment that was done, that very clearly and explicitly stated that Macedonia is not ready to have credible elections, was a step in the right direction. What's missing now? is this sense of, I think we're too comfortable now. I think we expect that somehow the political leaders that have put the house on fire will find a way to extinguish the fire left alone. And I think we really need uh, a high level engagement in this period between uh, the last engagement, where we have delayed the elections, to push for some media reforms, to push the voters, the voters' registry in Macedonia yeah. is a joke. Yeah. Yeah. People say the Macedonian voters' registry is like an onion. The more you open it, the more you cry. 50 people in one address. It's, notorious, uh, it's notoriously manipulated. It's in the European Commission report. It's in previous report. It's in the wiretaps. I think it's too risky to leave Macedon Macedonia now that somehow the leaders will find a way to work together on, on credible elections. Do you agree that, that, that the, the, the impression is there is no EU anymore on the ground? At the, at the, a, and instead we have a, a, the, the two last important messages from the international community was, was delivered by the all, US ambassador it, alone. It's not clear whether there will, there will be another assessment. No one knows. The signals that. are like the previous mm -hmm. one, before June. Yeah. Signals are that there won't be. Uh, the Peter van Houten's process, the working groups he of left. the parties, are not there. Vomero publicly denunciated him. There was lack of a proper protective response from Brussels. He is probably on his way out. There is no process at the moment. And no one knows, you know. Mm. And we live in this vague hope that somehow Macedonia will manage mm. to, to do what itself yeah. Yeah. in terms of uh, preconditions for credible elections. Yeah. Mr. Koka, Mr. Uh, yes, where is EU? E EU is very much present, even if you don't uh, tangibly feel it. When we were there, uh, it was really unfortunate. There was, you, you said that the American ambassador alone, EU ambassador, for family reasons, his mother underwent a very heavy surgery. She was not in the country at that time. Thank it you for explanation then, look, because it didn't public look opinion. Good. There was a charge d'affaires, yeah, okay. young, uh, promising diplomat from Slovakia, but of course, ambassador should be there, I understand it. And concerning Mr. Hahn, he will 
he's very much behind all these activities and you will see a lot of him in the in the future our visit there was also coordinated by by, by him so it was a matter of unhappy circumstances that it, that it looked it looked like that i didn't like it myself frankly but what you are saying it's really interesting that um, what you said that now everybody expects Macedonians to re resolve everything by by themselves. That uh, that should be wrong. I think that we very much feel the core responsibility, if you wish. It's uh, our common project to prepare country for the future democratic development. And we don't resign from this responsibility. But that's why behind the scenes, I know that the uh, commission is active is uh, directly uh, contacting our delegation, delegation there. And I think also the fact that we are co coordinating and cooperating with the US was the silent agreement that it will be, it will be like that. And as Ivo Weigl mentioned before, European Union will send the observers even well before the elections to, to, to follow the situation as it is. I only hope that the situation before the elections will not be exactly as it was before the 24th of April elections. And we, we all hope <coughs> that uh, although we cannot uh, produce miracles, you mentioned the voters register, yes, also c cross checkings and the, the different sources of, of the records is really very difficult to reconcile completely and maybe to, uh, to implement all the necessary reforms. But, but for that, if we would like to wait for that. We can wait many years, maybe. So uh, I think that uh, the, I, I on, on, I'll only comment on what you said. We feel the core responsibility for that. And I think that process will show that we are there and EU will be engaged. Do, Mr. Weimar, do, do, I would like do you to, agree to that add we are missing the also. more presence of EU yes, right uh, now, before the election? I don't think that you should miss uh, uh, this presence. This presence should not be excessive. The, there was a continuous uh, interest and presence of European Union in the form of, of working group of Van Houten. There were, there were some <coughs> other people involved and there were us. There was, I, must, I, I, I strongly also uh, 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 not accept your criticism on the address of Commissioner Hahn. He really devoted to, the, to, the, to, to, to enhance the political, normal political dialogue and, and process. I'm not in, criticizing in, Mr. Weigel. In, in, I said that in, he uh, mysteriously you disappeared from the scene. Listen, please. Uh, uh, if you ask, okay. then you have to listen yeah. the ans answer. You know. And, uh, and I don't think that Macedonia is a country under, under uh, uh, protection or under, under the surveillance. Uh, uh, the politicians in Macedonia have to take their responsibility and they to have, have to take their responsibility to their voters. The voters have to take the responsibilities how they are casting their votes, whom they are supporting and why they are supporting it. I know that it, the problem in Macedonia is uh, very much in the on in in how media are presenting the uh, the the political situation and the, and the, and the debates uh, there are very questionable, no debates, okay. very questionable uh, uh, ethic of or professional ethic there and i don't i wouldn't blame only journalists I, there is the the problem is the systemic uh, problem but uh, i again i repeat there is nothing but elections which bring uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the stability or, or the decision, democratic decision in, in, in a country who wants to be the member of European Union. Uh, I suggested uh, that, that uh, OSCE would, for instance, make, exert some pressure on the media and, and, and organize something which would uh, give them a lead. How, what is the real rule of, of, of uh, media in the electoral process? Uh, we, we mentioned before that, that there will be uh, uh, quite a massive presence of observers. United States will also send their, uh, their observers. Uh, Odir will, will, will be there. So 
there will be a lot of international uh, uh, surveillance and presence. I, I would not say, uh, and I don't accept that, that Macedonia is, is now abandoned and, and uh, and, uh, and that we, we uh, got rid of our own responsibility. Maybe just for the, the end, because we are finishing our program, we didn't have time to talk about anything. What Mr. Weigel mentioned, huge challenges inside inter-ethnic, multi-ethnic society and difficult environment, name issue with Greece. And refugee crisis EU is now putting up its forces on the Macedonian border. And I'll make yeah. only two points. One is in terms of the the need of the international engagement. The nature of Persian agreement is such that uh, one of the goals is to dismantle, dismantle the authoritarian hold over the state apparatus. According to Pribe, there is an inter authoritarian hold. It is not in the interest of the ruling party to do that voluntarily. And that's why for Persia to deliver on that goal, we need continuous daily pressure by the citizens at home and by the international community that is interested to help Macedonia. We cannot expect another similarly rigged elections to resolve the deep institutional crisis that started in part by uh, electoral fraud. We need to dismantle the system and take out the systemic advantage of the ruling party. For that, we need the international community. And uh, the second very point very briefly, both geography Macedonia is on the front line of the refugee crisis. And demography, and I will recall the incident in Kumanovo uh, in May last year, which sh should still be a wake-up call. When institutions are weak, Macedonia is most vulnerable on the inter-ethnic relations. Both those direct in the same point in the same direction. Engagement is needed, and I don't think left alone we will make it. We need that help. Thank you, okay, so much. thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Poštovani gledatelji, pratili ste još jednu emisiju Balkona u Europi. Hvala vam što ste bili s nama. Srdečan pozdrav. Pozdrav.